All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be on this knife, and this is the Greatest from Cutlery, Tidiut Cutlery, number 74 cotton sampler. And this is the natural textured micarta version. Specifically, this is the 74, nine for the cotton sampler blade shape, one for single blade, 2023. And so I actually did do a video, video and article on the cotton sampler highlighting a an earlier gradation cutlery version uh, a couple years ago. Now, I don't suggest going and watching the video because when I looked back at it, the audio was really weird. It was kind of off and everything, but I would check out the article. So I'll link the article in the description. It gives you some background information on the pattern itself that I'm not gonna go into in this video because this is just kind of to show this knife and give you a comparison to the other knife that I did a video on recently, which is kind of a pair for this knife and is the Harvester. So the cotton sampler is a really strange pattern. It's one that has definitely been around for a long time and there's kind of different versions of it and things like that that you can learn more about again in that article. But the idea is that this blade shape is made so that you can sample cotton. So cotton comes in bales. You can use this to cut kind of a plug out and literally take a sample of the cotton. It's very strange though. You can see that it has this flat area. There's no edge here. Um, and it, it is somewhat ground, but not a lot. It's definitely not ground to any sort of, you know, blade or anything like that. It's just an extension basically of the blade. And then you have this really strange blade shape where it gets much, much wider and then comes to, you know, an abrupt tip. So there's, you know, an extreme belly that is very different than most other knives. And it has this interesting cutoff at the tip here to the spine, which is almost like a spay blade. So I would say that this is like a very modified spay blade shape. Now, you know, definitely take that with a grain of salt. It is modified. It's, you know, not as straight like a spay blade usually is, but with that abrupt belly and this, that's what I would say it's probably closest to, but it's a very weird blade shape and very niche and is something that they haven't done a whole, whole lot of. But they did do before. So again, I'll just show you this real quick. This is a version of the cotton sampler that was done as a club knife for the Allegheny Mountain Knife Collectors Association, which I am a member of. This was made in 2013, so 10 years ago. So uh, definitely a big gap between these two, but you can see that they are very similar. This is a jigged bone, whereas this, is basically jigged micarta. They call it natural textured micarta, but it's a jigged natural canvas micarta. And really on this knife and its pair, the, the main thing that I enjoy is this jigged micarta. I think that this jigged micarta is really, really cool. I really hope that they do more of it. I think that this jigging pattern is really nice on micarta. It just makes these super grippy. I mean, if you're gonna use these knives, this jigged micarta or natural textured micarta is very, very grippy. You could use this and definitely not worry about dropping it or anything like that. And I also think it looks really good. I would love to see GEC do uh, a jigged paper micarta because it has a really cool look, very similar to bone. And I just think that it would be really cool. And they've demonstrated that they can do this jigging on micarta really nicely. I think paper micarta, you know, who knows, but it could even be easier to jig because you don't have to worry as much about the fabric in there. So uh, I talked about how this knife has a pair and I wanna show it here. This is the 47. So this is the 74 and this is the 47 and they're pretty much mirrors of each other. Um, maybe not 100% identical mirrors, but very similar in that this is a swayback and this is a curved jack and they have pretty much the same proportions. But not only that, on these two knives that have been made back to back basically, they have the same handle material or cover choices and the same uh, shields. So interesting there. And then they also have this interesting finish on the bolsters where it's a satin. It's a vertical satin here and then a horizontal satin here. And I think that it makes a pretty unique look. I do actually like the way that looks. And it is a really well-made knife. There's no question of that. Uh, these have been less expensive than other GEC releases recently. The others have 
been going up in price. And then these were back down, depending on the dealer. Um, I got these at two different dealers. I got this one, the cotton sampler at Knives Ship Free, probably my favorite place to, to buy you know, knives in general and, and GECs, but there are lots of other great dealers also. I got this at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, but it just happened that that's where they were available, where they dropped when I could get them. And they were both in the about $105 range. So um, definitely less than other releases have been recently. And, um, you know, they have varied across dealers. Some dealers had them up at like 140 or 150. And even still then, that's, you know, not at the higher end of what GEC knives have been recently. So uh, it's interesting to see that these are a little bit lower in price. I don't think that they're lower in quality. Now, you know, maybe my card is cheaper than bone and things like that, but they are made really well. I mean, the satin finish maybe takes less than the polish finish on a bolster, but I think it looks good. So I think that from a perspective of how these are made, the quality, you know, and the history, they're a great deal. Both of these knives are knives that have very strong history. So the Harvester, or what you might call a pruner, well, it's a Harvester with a pruner blade. You know, it's a knife that's been around forever. People have been using them in agriculture forever. And uh, the Cotton Sampler, it's a knife that has, you know, an interesting history, certainly a long history in pocket knives. And it is, again, agriculture focused. So that history is really cool. You still get that great, great history without, you know, a super high price point. But on the other end of that is that they are really niche. So I think both of these knives, you know, these blade shapes are not the most practical blade shapes for everyday carry, for, you know, what the, the average modern person is, is doing. You know, I have never sampled a, a bale of cotton. Uh, I have cut strings on hay bales, but that's about as close as I've gotten. Uh, on the other hand, I do think that a harvester or a pruner blade shape is pretty useful. It's just that it's harder to sharpen. So, you know, for me, I use a flat stone to sharpen and it's a little bit more difficult on the pruner blade shape. Uh, so, you know, they are definitely niche blade shapes. You could get another about an inch of edge out of this knife if it didn't have this um, cotton sampler blade. So very cool and a lot of history, but probably not the most practical knives if you're getting a knife for use. But I think if you're buying a GEC, you know, you probably have an appreciation for the history and for them being different too. I mean, you know, you could go out and buy, uh, you know, a Rat One or something like that, a modern knife, if you're just looking for a purely practical knife. But if you want something that's cool and has some history, you know, that's that's one of the big reasons why you get a GEC. Now, as for one thing that I didn't mention about this knife, um, the tip on this is not proud, it sits pretty close. Uh, same deal here, this tip is not proud, but sits pretty close. I think they, they probably, you know, I'd like to have seen those dropped a little lower. I'm not sure, this one sits about the same as you can see, maybe even a little bit higher, to be honest. So um, that's just one of those things. If you watch my videos, you know I nitpick about uh, proud tips quite a bit. <laughs> um, and so I just wanted to mention that. But these are interesting ones. They have been, I think, a little bit more or a little bit easier to get on drops. They haven't been selling out in five seconds or whatever. I was able to get both of these without really hurrying too much. Um, and they are a little bit less expensive. So if you like the kind of weirdness of these, definitely go for them. Now, one thing that I, I wanted to mention in the video on this knife and didn't, and then mentioned in the comments and people had some questions about it, is the fact that both of these have come in this bubble wrap instead of the wax paper that GECs kind of have always come in until I think the 36s or maybe some others were you know, the first ones to have it. But um, I don't generally prefer this bubble wrap because I, I find that with this um, adhesive that it has on here, once you open it, if you if you reclose it and try to open it again, it'll rip. So you can see this ripped a little bit here, um, but particularly on the one that the 74 came in, the cotton sampler came in, you know, it, it rips when you try to reopen it. 
Um, so, you know, I just don't think that it's, it doesn't have that historical feel that the wax paper does have. So like I say, one of the values of these knives is they have that really cool historical feel to them. And the bubble wrap doesn't quite have that. Whereas the wax paper really does. Uh, I, you know, one of the things, the smell of the, the knife and the wax paper is part of the, the experience of opening it. Now, Joan May of Great Eastern Cutlery did say that the reason that they chose the bubble wrap on these versions of these knives, but not the, the versions that have different covers and, and finishing, is that the tubes can sometimes, you know, give some scuffing on the I believe bolsters is what they were concerned about. So, you know, they use these on the textured micarta versions, which have the satin bolsters and such, and not the other versions, or not some of the other versions at least. These are the only ones from these runs of knives that I've gotten. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about that. Um, you know, I think that both are, from a practical sense, probably fine, um, but, I just don't think that the, the bubble wrap has quite that same cool feel that the wax paper has. So those are my thoughts on these knives. I think that they're really interesting. Uh, they're very cool from a historical standpoint. They've been coming in at better, you know, a uh, little bit lower price points than some of the other recent releases, but they are also very niche. So um, grab one if you can, if you'd like, certainly wouldn't hurt. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, you can check out the article that I have on the cotton sampler. Uh, there is the video also, but the audio is all, you know, misaligned and stuff like that. A little bit frustrating looking back at that one, but definitely check out the article. Also check out my other articles. I have articles on knives like these and knife related topics at knifethoughts.com. Check out my other social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts. Make sure you're subscribed. Click the bell and select all so you know when I post new videos. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good. Whoops. <laughs>